Good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to do a, a range test, and uh, I thought this one would be fun to try, slightly different to the other ones, that uh, I would do a what represents like a relatively short commute to work. So 11 miles uh, to get where I need to go, and then 11 miles to come back. Um, with a fairly high battery percentage just to see how much uh, energy it actually uses to do that kind of a drive and I'm going to do this with preconditioning off so I haven't warmed the car up temperature outside is six degrees uh, and I haven't used the car for a couple of days so we're going to be able to see from this test how much energy we use if you were to jump into the car in the morning with no preconditioning and uh, drive a basically what's going to be about probably 24 mile round trip and then figure out how many times you could do that uh, if you were say we're in a situation where where you only charged on the weekend would you be able to drive a 20 mile five mile round trip how many times would you be able to do that and uh, what would be the total range of the Polestar 2 if you were doing this kind of thing rather than the usual range tests which I've done which are a much longer tests you know driving further so yeah let's get started and see what happens okay so to do this I'm going to drive from where I live to uh, Asda in Crawley um, to go and uh, I need to stop for work purposes and also I need to go and do a bit of shopping. So this uh, you can see on Google Maps here is saying it's 11 miles and we're going to arrive with 89% battery. So you can also then see on the display, the driver's display, it's saying battery level 97% and uh, it thinks then that we're going to use 8% battery to get there. Um, covering 11 miles. So yeah, let's head off and uh, we'll reset the trip computer before we go and see what kind of consumption we get and whether or not we arrive with 89% uh, battery. Okay, yeah, let's go. Okay, so first part of the drive finished, 11 miles complete. Well, let's see, what does it say? Uh, yeah, exactly 11 miles on the trip computer. And that matches Google Maps. And we arrive with exactly what Google Maps estimated at 89%. Um, 21 minute drive, 32 miles per hour average speed. Although, yeah, that's interesting. That seems really low because most of it is, uh, was at 70 miles an hour on the A23. But uh, yeah, I guess some of it was through town. So probably average down to that and uh, 47 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So let's see what happens now. Most of that was uphill actually because um, there's an elevation change from where I live to drive up here. So we'll see if that uh, drops down a bit when we head back on the 11 mile journey back home and see what the total average is between the two, two trips. Okay, so I'm back at the car now and uh, almost ready to head home, finish shopping. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. I've left the car for about an hour and 15 minutes now, and it's um, it's rarely warm in the car. Now this will make a big difference, I think, to people's consumption, but uh, the car is in the sun. It is winter, it's seven degrees now, but uh, it is very sunny. The storms have passed and um, yeah, that, uh, that sun really does help to warm up the Polestar and it's very well insulated, um, which is, is, is a good thing. So it retains its heat pretty well. That's gonna help with consumption uh, definitely on uh, days when you have lots of sun in winter. So battery has now dropped to 88%. So I guess we, we arrived with 89, but it was on, on the edge of 88, 89. So we're looking at 88% and I'm not gonna reset the trip computer. So uh, we'll just head off and, and see what it's like once we get back home. Okay, so I'm back home now and uh, after that drive we covered 26.3 miles showing 44.2 kilowatt hours 
per 100 miles and uh, we have gone down from 97% to 79 which is 18% um, of the battery used to cover that uh, journey. So how do we do with consumption? Well, um, so I drove with the climate set to 20 degrees. I had the heated seat on low and the steering wheel on. So kind of normal driving. Um, we used 18% to cover 26.3 miles. So to work that out, let's take 26.3 and divide that by 18. So that's um, 1.46 miles per percent times that by 100. And you have a theoretical range of 146 miles if you were to do this kind of driving on a daily basis. So assume, for example, you were doing a, a 26 mile round trip. You didn't precondition at the start of the day. You just got in the car after it had cooled down, or in this case, not really cooled down, but warmed up from the sun and you just drove home. So kind of natural driving. You would be able to do this um, about five times before you had to charge up. So say for example, you charge up on the weekend, you could probably do this Monday to Friday and uh, then charge up again the following weekend. So another real world example for people perhaps who don't uh, wanna charge every single day or who might instead use a rapid charger once a week, um, that is perfectly doable. Now, 40, 146 miles might not be um, to most people uh, a particularly impressive uh, range um, and I would I would agree now we don't seem to see many of these kinds of range tests I've noticed a lot of the, the tests that people do do tend to be longer like they tend to be how far can you go for a couple of hours or you know if you're driving at I don't know 50 miles an hour 80 kilometers an hour or 70 miles an hour 120 kilometers an hour for two hours how far will the car go but this is a slightly different test this is uh, a, a stop start range test over time um, and yeah in reality if you are trying to judge the Polestar's total range on that basis I, that's a little bit of a tricky one because I don't think Polestar make any claims anywhere on the website or do any EV manufacturers of how far you would get if you start cold every single day at five degrees and you do a short journey followed by another short journey uh, and in my case half of that drive was probably on the motorway at 70 miles an hour um, half of it was in fairly in rainy conditions and it was all between five and seven degrees so the point i'm trying to make here is that if you are looking at the range that you're getting from the car in this kind of situation I don't think it's realistic to assume you're gonna get 250 miles or even 200 miles with these kind of short trips. I think 150 miles, well, that's what I got in the car, but I'd love to hear anyone else's test. If, if anyone else has done this, for example, in a Tesla or a Kia e Nero or something like that, please comment down below because I'd be very curious to know what you would actually get if you do short 10 to 15 mile trips on an ongoing basis, how long the battery would last and how many of these trips you'd be able to do. Another thing to consider as well is the actual cost per kilowatt uh, hour of electricity on a drive like this. So just um, looking at another worked example, if you consider that uh, we used 18% of the battery and uh, then you work that out as 18% of battery to do 26.3 miles, that uh, works out at two um, miles per kilowatt hour of electricity. Now, I think, to be honest, I, I don't think that's actually that unreasonable on these kinds of short trips, um, especially in cold conditions without preconditioning. So yeah, it depends again on the cost of what you've paid for ele your electricity. If you are rapid charging only and you're paying 25 to 30 pence, that's gonna be 15 pence per mile. So you're in the same kind of numbers that you'd expect from a normal diesel or petrol car. But if you are charging on an eco tariff, um, I'm on Octopus Agile, which I've mentioned before. In fact, that went negative pricing last night due to the high winds. I got paid four pence per kilowatt hour to, um, to take energy out of the grid. But say for example, uh, normally I'm charging overnight at between five and eight pence. That's costing two to four pence per mile. So it's still very cheap, um, even if the Polestar might not be the most efficient car in terms of its electric usage. Now, another note uh, worth considering on preconditioning is um, preconditioning pre the car is really only worth doing if you are 
plugged into the, the mains, unless it's for comfort. Obviously, if you want to make it more comfortable, then, then of course you should do it. But it's not saving you any energy. It still uses energy to precondition. And this comes up about battery heating as well. Battery heating will utilize energy. So if you want to be as efficient as possible, then preconditioning and battery heating isn't really worth it. It is comfortable for sure, and it may save some time. But uh, if you're plugged into the mains, preconditioning will, of course, save your battery for driving later, and it will help. But if you're not plugged into the mains, preconditioning the car isn't going to help you at all. Um, so I just want to clarify that point, because uh, I may have made it sound like preconditioning will save all, all, all people's troubles, but the, it won't. It, it will still use energy from the battery. Um, so yeah, preconditioning plugged into the mains is going to help you with range for sure. But uh, if not, it's really just a comfort thing. So uh, yeah, I hope this um, video has been useful. And uh, if you could like and subscribe down below, that would be great. And I'll see you again with another video very soon. Thank you.